So I, I'm Jack. Uh, I, I live in London quite locally. Um, I'm, I'm quite posh, as probably most of you are already gauged. <laughs> Don't need shit for it, though. You get quite a lot of stick for being posh, but you know, it's like I always say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but pff, whatever, I'm with Booper. Um, <laughs> I am posh, I'm not like, uh, not like right wing though, not, not, not prejudice, not homophobic. Well, I guess I'm homophobic in the same sense that I'm arachnophobic. I'm not scared of spiders. I'm not scared of gays. <laughs> Though I would probably scream if I saw one in my bath. <laughs> uh, and you know, I, like, I really, I'm young. I'm not like, I'm not like one of the, like, an, you know, your regular youth, I guess. Because people are afraid of young people now, aren't they? And, and I, I'm afraid of young people as well. But I, I forget what I'm meant to be afraid of. Because it seems to change with young people. If you read the tabloids, like one minute you get it, it's the young people because it's like knife crime and gun crime, hoodies, asbos, they're going to stab you, all of that stuff. Next minute, they're all fat and they're overweight and it's the obesity epidemic. And I'm confused. I don't know what I'm meant to be scared of anymore. I'm worried to walk down the street lest I'm attacked by a fat kid with a knife and a fork. <laughs> I want to stay fit, I want to be good at things like fitness and health, I want to be healthy, I want to be healthy, but I've never been good at it, you know? Even when I was at school, I hated PE, I, was more, I hated PE so much at school, mainly because of my PE teacher, he's a complete arsehole. His name was Mr. Walton, he was from South Africa, and he was a lumbering hulk of protein shake and unresolved childhood issues, which he took <laughs> out on me every week. He was horrible to me. He humiliated me every lesson, right? And I remember, I remember one class, right, okay, he tried to get us to do a bleep test, which I refused to do, because we weren't living in Nazi Germany. <laughs> Ironically, an environment in which he would have thrived. And he was shouting at me, pushing me, trying to embarrass me and humiliate me. I'm quite a sensitive soul, I couldn't hack it. Eventually, I flipped. He was like, go on, Jack, push yourself now, embrace the burn, look at my body, Jack. How do you think I got to where I am today? I don't know, oppressing black people. <laughs> Motivator. He thought the stuff that he was saying was inspirational to the children. It wasn't. It was psychotic. And it never made any sense as well. I remember once, right, we were playing basketball and just in the middle of the game, he blew his whistle and in front of everyone just shouted at me, the problem with you, Jack, is you're all fart and no poo. Well, when I fart, I follow through and sometimes there's blood. <laughs> But I tried at school, I just could never do very well. But I always think, right, if you weren't very good at school, there's always one thing that everyone that wasn't good at school can hold on to. And we need to hold on to this. And that is that every school all over the world, in every class, there was always that person that was better than everyone else, yeah? That got into all the sports teams, that was in the school play, that had a girlfriend, Mr. Perfect. You can hold on to the fact that, yeah, they were Mr. Perfect at school and everyone resented them and they were so great, but in later life, Mr. Perfect will have made his mistakes. He will have screwed things up. And now, with Facebook, you can find the bastard. <laughs> you can hunt him down and look at his photographs and realise, yeah, you were Mr. Perfect at school, but now someone's put on a little bit of weight, now someone's lost their job and they're sleeping in the back of their car, so screw you, Robbie Westlake. <laughs> And it's not just them, you can also find people that didn't want to have sex with you at school. They rejected you at school because they were better than you at school. And you can find them on Facebook as well. And you can hunt them down and look through their photographs and do what us perverts like to refer to as the revenge wank. Yeah, <laughs> didn't want to have sex with me at school. How do you like it now, Robbie Wesley? The sad thing is, right, I'm the only person that can't do this, okay? I can't hold on to the fact that the person I resented has failed in their life. Because I used to sit next to Mr. Perfect in my class. I used to have to sit next to him every single class, every single term time. My school, which down the road in Sheen in London. And at my school, Mr. Perfect's name was Robert Pattinson. <laughs> the star of the internationally acclaimed movie Twilight. 
who earns hundreds of millions of dollars a year, has been voted the sexiest man alive in every magazine there is. Not every magazine, Top Gear didn't do the poll, but he's really popular <laughs> and I hate it. Cause all I can think of is the knobhead that I used to have to sit next to at school. And I have to watch him on the news at all these movie premieres and he turns up and there's all of his screaming, adoring little fans. The girls that have camped out overnight just so they can get a glimpse of his stupid face. And they've got his stupid face on their t-shirts and they've got it on their banners. These little girls that have waited to see their hero. Do you know what they chant outside his premieres, Robert Pattinson fans? They chant, bite me, Robert, bite me, bite me, vampire boy, bite me, bite me, bite me, ha ha. I hope he does bite one of them one day and the one that he bites has hepatitis. I hate him! He stole my dreams! For those of you that don't know who this dickhead is, right? He's in these Twilight films where he plays a vampire, but not a fun vampire like Christopher Lee with the funny lines and the cape. Nah, in Twilight, Robert Pattinson plays a vampire that looks more like one of Jedward that has just been diagnosed with acute pancreatitis. It's both sad, but also trying to work out what the pancreas is. And he's everywhere, everywhere I look. He's in films, he's in the Harry Potter film. I went to see that film four times. Every time I was the only one in the cinema laughing when his character died. <laughs> I'll come clean with you though. The main reason I have an issue with Robert Panson and Twilight is that when I was at school, I realized I wasn't gonna be good at sport, I wasn't gonna be academic. So I thought, well, if I'm rubbish at everything, then I'll have to do drama, because that's what you do if you're shit. <laughs> drama students in, awkward laughs. <laughs> what are they gonna do? <laughs> Look at me, Jack, I'm making an angry tree. <laughs> but that was me. I thought, that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do drama. I'm gonna, I'm gonna audition for every single play that my school puts on. And every single play that I went in to audition for in my school, I learned all of my lines. I went in in front of the drama teacher. I gave it my all. And every single play that I auditioned for, Robert Pattinson got cast in the lead role. <laughs> and I got cast as Villager Six. The twat who used to have to stand at the corner of the stage and do nothing for an hour and a half whilst his parents looked on ashamed. <laughs> I say I didn't throw myself into these roles. When I was playing Villager 6, I would give it my all. The drama teacher would be like, Jack, at the end of the scene, all you have to do, Robert's doing his final speech, is walk very quietly from that side of the stage to this side of the stage and exit quietly without making a fuss. I was like, oh my God, sir, you are a fool. When Jack Whitehall is on stage, he does not walk, he glides. <laughs> The, the, the other one they'd have to do right, and this happened on several occasions, <laughs> the school were forced to write parts into plays so my parents wouldn't complain to the headmaster. Do you realise how humiliating that is? When you're stood with all of your friends and peers in front of a cast list, and yeah, it had my name on it, but everyone knows there is no emu in the manger. <laughs> I look like a dick. But the worst thing about it, and it still cuts me up, and I cannot get over it, is the one very simple and plain fact. And that is, Robert Pattinson is not a good actor. He wasn't a good actor at school, he's not a good actor now. I've been to see him in these Twilight films several times, and every time I watch him on the screen, through the web of tears, I'm astounded how my bigger truck of shit he is. All the guy does is mope around, giving this one same surly look. And that that's a look that he stole off me! Because it's the exact same thing that I'm doing But I'm not bitter, I'm very happy. <laughs> with success. And basically, in my life, all I've ever wanted to do is make my parents proud, and especially my mum, right? Because my mum, she's very proud of her children, but she's also very openly proud about her children. She loves doing that thing that all mums like doing, right? Going to do the weekly shop at the local supermarket, and then when she's there doing the weekly shop, just look around for other local mothers in the area. And then they go over, they start to have a little bit of a chat, a little bit of banter about whatever, silly nonsense. And then slowly but surely, that banter will segue into a little exchange where they start showing off about their children. Back and forth, back and forth. 
And what it becomes is essentially, in the supermarket, a little supermarket game of top trumps with your kids. <laughs> and my mum is amazing at playing child top trumps, because when she plays against other mothers, my mum thinks outside the box. She uses categories that you didn't even know existed. And she can win any exchange with any mother, even when she's showing off about my little brother Barnaby, who by far and away is her dud card. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know the way every set of siblings asked to have the one that shit? <laughs> you're sat there thinking, ours doesn't. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> but I've seen my mum do it right. She'll scour around Sainsbury's looking for the mother that she wants to have the exchange with, hunting down her prey. And then, when she finds the mother, she'll ram the trolley in front of her and my mum will start the game. Oh, hello, Jane. How's Joe? Yes, Joe's doing very well, Hilary. He has bought a new house. He's moving into it with his girlfriend and he's got a new job. He's earning quite a lot of money. How's your son? I forget his name. Oh, yes. Barnaby. Yeah, Barnaby's fine. How big are Joe's feet? I beg your pardon. You heard me, bitch. Um, <laughs> well, I think he's only a size eight. Ooh, only size eight. Well, Barnaby is size 13. Ooh, did my mum just hit you with the my son's got a bigger dick card? <laughs> I think she did. It's a low blow, but she'll take the round. Walk on, bitch. Mothers were terrified of my mum. They would cower, try and avoid eye contact with her. My mother was very much the sheriff in that town. But then, ladies and gentlemen, approximately five months ago, someone else started shopping in our local Sainsbury's. Someone that had come into a little bit of money recently. And all of a sudden, there was a new sheriff in town. And that sheriff's name was a Mrs. Claire Pattinson. <laughs> His mum started shopping in our supermarket. And that woman was unbeatable at child top trumps. My mum wouldn't know what to do. She'd desperately try and hide. But Claire would always catch up with her. She'd ram the trolley in front of my mum and this time she'd start the exchange. How's Jack? Yes, Jack's doing fine. How's Robert? Robert's doing very well. How big are Robert's feet? Robert's feet? Well, I think he's only a very small size seven. <gasps> only size seven? Well, well, Jack is size, well, obviously that's size seven in the UK, Hillary. He doesn't live here anymore. He lives in Los Angeles, where I think he's a size 44. But he doesn't have to buy shoes for himself because the studio buy them for him because he's earning them so much money in films like Twilight, which goes $295 million in its opening weekend. What's Jack doing this weekend? Oh, a gig in Sunderland. How quaint. <laughs> was to swap supermarkets. Robert Pattinson is not only ruining my life, he's affecting my diet. And it's all right for Claire Pattinson just waltzing down the aisles of Sainsbury's, buying herself only the finest organic range, couscous and quails. Meanwhile, my mother is self-harming in Lidl. 